this is Python's Paradise. This is your host, Greg Gilbert, a.k.a. the Python Hyena, straight out of Fredericton, New Brunswick, Canada. And here we are on January the 16th, 2022. And I uh, just listened to my guest talk about how cold it is in California <laughs> at 50 or 60 degrees. And yeah, if he do what our temperature was, he wouldn't be complaining so much. Here in Atlantic Canada, we're built for that. We're strong here, I guess. <laughs> Folks, I love Secret Santa. Got it here on Blu-ray, and I'm ab about to have my six guests from the film on here. And... Uh, I made this an annual tradition at Christmas time. Actually, I make this an annual tradition regardless. <laughs> Folks, I give you the guy that really should stop answering the door when people <laughs> come to it with uh, hysterics, folks. I give you the awesome Will Dixon. How do you do, Will? I'm very well, thanks. Thanks, Greg. <laughs> you know, um, I gotta say a special shout out to uh, Uncle Carter himself, uh, Curtis Fortier, for connecting us and uh, uh, allowing this to happen. And uh, um, he was bound up something fierce and took him a few moments to to get on here because you know him. <laughs> I do, I do know Mr. Curtis. Oh, I love Curtis Fortier. I know he's a baddie. Yeah, I, I love him. He's one of the funniest men I've ever met in my life. Yeah, I I can I can believe that. Mm -hmm. I know we're connecting last night, and we just lost uh, Sidney Portier, and you was yeah, watching yeah. Uh, in the heat of the night. Call me Mister Tibbs. I can't do that justice. It's hard. Yeah, no, it's hard to do. It's hard to do Sidney justice. He no. he is. Um, he is uh, one of uh, one of a kind. I I iconic is actually the word to use. It it's it's thrown around a lot. Uh, the word iconic, but Sidney Poitier was actually iconic. And for so many, for so many actors of color, you know, when you're watching when you're watching movies in the in the '60s and '70s, I'm dating the hell out of myself here. But when you're watching movies in the '60s and '70s, there was no one. You know, our heroes were the same as ever. John Wayne, uh, Clint Eastwood you know, um, uh, uh, Charles Bronson, you know, it's, it's that kind of a thing. And, and Sidney Poitier comes in and he is the first bona fide person of color, black actor who is a bona fide movie star. And suddenly for a, a kid like me, who, who, who this is all I've ever wanted to do since I was a little, a little Will, um, it's all I've ever wanted to do for, for somebody like me who is sort of patterned a, a path that looks like all the character actors and the secondary actors and the best friends and the, you know, suddenly it became possible to be an actual movie star. Um, that's what Sidney Poitier, one, just one of the things Sidney Poitier did for, for, for that us. As one, yeah. Player. But that one, I think is one of the standout uh, things he did was in the heat of the night. Oh yeah. Of course. Yeah. But Sidney, Sidney Poitier was also not afraid to bring, to bring uh, the, the, whatever the, the, the current racial tenor was in this country, which has always been fraught, um, and, 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 and gives uh, total props to the producers, the directors who had the foresight and the courage in the 1960s to actually make that happen. And if, you know, I was watching, like we said, we were, we were chatting yesterday about in the heat of the night, I probably haven't seen that movie in, in 20 years and how well it stands up and how, how um, it's just indelible. It's indelible filmmaking, but how well it stands up. And for the times that we're in down here, um, it's still extraordinarily timely and an extraordinary piece of film. Yeah. Well, you know what? Um, speaking of extraordinary piece of film, you know. I, I love I love that you love this movie because I love it too, man. I, I watch this and, and giggle along. And, and you know, w when we went up 
um, to, to build this film, I mean, I, I'm sure you've heard all the stories about going up and working crew and working. Um, nobody had any idea, except maybe Adam, had any idea the impact that this was going to, how many people were just going to love this film, man. So it's just so, <laughs> it, just, it just makes me happy. But up there in, in Atlantic Canada, um, some guy, it just loves our movie, man. I love it. Yeah, no, I uh, I've had Adam Marcus on here uh, once, and I had uh, the Cackle Queen herself, Deborah <laughs> Sullivan, on yeah. here, and then I had them on here together. Oh no, that must yeah. be. I got to look that one up. I got to look that tape up. Yeah, and I've had um, uh, Curtis Fortier and michelle renee allaire on twice and i've had tim eilers on the composer so uh yeah, tim yep so um yeah this film's getting covered well on the show and uh curtis put me in touch with you and with uh ryan seaton so uh oh ryan yeah yep so ryan's um, a huge part of this mm -hmm. um so I'm looking forward to uh, covering more and to see if I can get this out here a little bit, you know? We appreciate it, Greg. We really, really do. Oh, yeah. I showed this to my uh, younger brother, who's my uh, my tech guy. Yeah. He, um, and he loved it. <laughs> he loved all the craziness going on in this film. <laughs> it's frantic, man. It is totally frantic. And... Um... God, if you'd have seen the shooting of this this thing when we were when we were when we were wrapping this show, I mean, like like I said, we worked we worked crew as well. Luckily, I I worked in production for for years for years, and so I had some experience. A couple other people, but when we were wrapping, it was me, um, Eddie, Scott Burkett. Um, gosh, I I, we, I hope you get a chance to 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 interview Eddie, um, who lives in China. That'll be interesting. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll sick you on to him. Mm -hmm. um, but it was just us left over. And we were, you know, we had wrapped out, we'd sent the trucks off down the mountain. We were up at Big Bear, we'd sent the trucks off down the mountain. And um, we were sitting there and, and Eddie had whipped us up some, some scrambled eggs. We were kind of sitting in, in one of the houses that we were using. And we looked out and the snow had fallen, right? We'd, we'd had a snowfall. Over the, and so it made the movie perfect. You saw how gorgeous it was. Uh huh. And we looked out the window and on the beautiful layer of white snow, Greg, there was blood everywhere, <laughs> the blood everywhere, all over this neighborhood. And Eddie and I looked at each other. And we were like, we going to jail, man. We're going to jail. <laughs> it was hysterical. I, I uh, God, I, I, I think Scotty's got some pictures of that, but it was just it was just a scene. It looked like there were nine different as, as there were nine different murders that had happened overnight in this neighborhood, this quiet, you know, big bear neighborhood. <laughs> yeah, I've heard all about it. And that getting up there was hectic because of a snowstorm and snowing, yeah. Yeah. They were sleeping on top of each other in the in the big house, our friend Pat Destro's house up there, where we shot, mm -hmm. where we shot most of the interiors. Um, yeah, it was quite an experience, man. Um, communal, you know, real kind of that. Uh, you, you, you get these kind of experiences like when you're in co doing college production theater. Yeah, but yeah. this was even closer because we had the we we were all sleeping, you know. I remember Scott Burkett and I finishing up, you know, early in the morning and trying to catch some Z's between shots. We were racked up. I was on the, on the, like on the mantle on the fireplace with a sleeping bag. And so we could stay out of the way of the shooting. And I mean, it was real, it was real camp out guerrilla filmmaking. <laughs> well, you know what? It, it's, it's interesting. You know, I loved how this, this just shows you could do a film outside the studio and still Absolutely. make something terrific and uh that's kind frank. of our brand yeah that's becoming our brand i'll be quite frank i think this film should have could have played in theaters and got an audience easily you know absolutely thank you for that i absolutely agree man i i um i i watch you know it's my job so it's a great job but i get to watch a lot of movies 
Mm -hmm. And when you stand this thing up to any, any in the horror genre, I mean, good Lord, when you go back and look at how um, some of the greats were built, uh -huh. it was really no different than what we just did up, up at Big Bear a few years ago. Mm -hmm. You know, it was, and, and on ours was probably more, ours was probably more organized than a lot of it. You know, I we shot that thing out. Yeah, we shot that thing out over the course of a couple of weekends really the bulk of it you know it's uh, it's an amazing piece of, of of craftsmanship number one but yeah it stands up man against any of the greats i think well um before we dive into this in detail um please give us a little bit of your background and how you come to be an actor um i was uh i was a jock <laughs> I was a jock with no place to go. Basically, I I uh, I'd uh, I, I'd done so poorly in 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 my classes. I dumped basically when I moved when I got to college. I was, oh Lord, here we go. When I got to college, I basically I, I looked at my first schedule and dumped every class between seven a.m. and eleven. That was my first official act of college. So my grades were, were, were not great. So when I went back for my second year and, and walked into my coach's office, they announced that they would be red shirting me that year. Now, for, for me, that was a, it was insulting and it was a blow to my, but they were actually saving me. They were actually, my coaches were actually saving me an extra year to play, but I didn't realize that I got very angry and, you know, went to, drink and cry on my on my best buddy's shoulder and about it and uh <laughs> to keep me on to keep me on suicide watch basically i was bereft i football was everything to me at that point um he just had he was just he just had me tag along wherever he was going well one of the places he was going was he was doing theater in the community theater walla walla washington community theater house and the director of that show was ran the the theater program for the college um she put me in the play played a cop who drank a beer she gave me a line and uh god I, if i'd have if we'd have prepped this greg i'd have had so many pictures for you <laughs> maybe i'll send them to you later um made me a cop gave me a line and then and then gave me invited me in and gave me a scholarship to the theater program Mm -hmm. And that's how it all started. Now, I gave it up a couple of times and went, you know, back onto the back into the workforce. But I was running clubs up down uh, in Seattle in the late 80s and 90s, running uh, health clubs. Mm -hmm. I, was a, I was still a gym rat. And um, I just I was I just something struck me. And, and I thought, man, if, if I don't if I don't go back and produce this, I'm, you know, or try to pursue this. I'm going to be, I'm going to be kicking myself in the ass for the rest of my life. If I stay in this business, um, which I, I, I love by the way, um, but don't pursue what I actually love and what always, what always drove me. Um, I'm going to hate myself, you know, when I'm this age. And so I, I, <laughs> I quit my job, started taking actor acting classes, um, up there at the forum in Seattle. And, um, just on a just actual absolute happenstance got a ride down to LA um, to work the LA County Fair selling soft tubs hot tubs and stayed everybody went home and I stayed and I tell you man that first month all I did was sit on the edge of my little fold-out couch bed and go what did you do what have you done what have you done to yourself <laughs> God. But mm -hmm. hey, you know, here I am. It's 30, close to 30 years later. There you go. Being interviewed by a guy from Canada. Yeah, yeah. And um I'm I'm gonna tell you, um, I understand that place where he was too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, taking a chance. It kind of reminds me of going to my first con because I've lived here in Fredericton, New Brunswick for my whole life. And I'm going to be 50 uh, this July. And um, it was like you're 36, man. And that actually pisses me off. 
<laughs> that is no fair, brother. Yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I'm trying to appeal to Michelle Renee Lair. Well, that's a we all are, dear. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, um, what I was going to say is I um, I went to uh, Toronto. I was invited to my first con by one of my guests, and I had never traveled, never been that far from where I am, and. Uh, it took uh, one of my guests invited me to a sister at her table at, at one of these conventions wow. to get me out of my funk. And uh, I'm kind of like, you know what? I'm, I enjoy this and People I've gone back they? every year since, you know? So I haven't been to the States yet. You got to give me time on that, but I understand the States is a bit of a mess at the moment. <laughs> Yeah, I would just go ahead, stay north for another year or so. Um, but we'll be back up and running. We'll be back up and running. Those cons, you know, we have, and Curtis especially, you know, has cons in the, in the you know, does cons in the comic book world. We've got friends that, have, uh, uh, that run a comic book shop down here. Curtis has, got, Curtis has got his Star Trek stuff. He's got now Secret Santa. Um, we'll get you down here. We'll get you. Yeah. Down. Yeah. Anyway, you know, talk about uh, connecting with Adam Marcus. Oh, yeah. Well, Adam, my, my mentor, Captain, my captain. Um, I was, uh, my, my ex-girlfriend was in class with Adam. And once we started, you know, speaking to each other again, she said, I think you got to check this out, man. I think you need to check this dude out. And um, I came and I, I audited the class. And uh, the, you, you go and you, you take a look and then, you know, if you want in, you bring in a monologue. Mm -hmm. Greg, I brought in the most pretentious, actory. I brought in Mammoth, you know, I had just done a play. I just done this play called Race. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I brought in one of my monologues from this, for this show. And it was so, it was so ridiculously pretentious. But I, I literally, when I got done with the, the reading of it, I, I, I literally tossed my script at Adam's feet. <laughs> I remember him just looking up at me. Like, okay. 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 And then he just <laughs> said, and, and he said, welcome to class. Well, I can't wait to work with you. Oh, man, I'm getting, I'm getting a little choked up right now. Um, and we've been working together since, ever since. That was, it's almost 10 years. Gosh, I think it is 10 years this year, 2012. Yeah, it's 10 years this year, man, about this time. And, and uh, man, I couldn't be happier to be part of that family. Um, his, his, you know, his, his, his filmmaking aside, the amount of support that Adam Marcus just gives as it's just part of his soul. You know, as he has famously said, if you invite me, I'll go to the opening of an envelope. And he does. He puts his money where his mouth is, man. He has never failed to miss. I, look, I'm getting ready. I'm going to rehearsals for a show here at the Fountain Theater starting Tuesday. Um, I guarantee you he'll go. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't even have, if he's in town and, and not even if he's around, he will, he will break his leg to go to the show. He and Deborah. Um, no end of support. No end of love. No end of the creative juice, you know, that, that all of us need. And, and as, as actors, we're such, we're such funky, you know, our, 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 our levels of self-doubt are just astronomical on a daily basis is what you fight. Um, it's sort of part of the gig. It's part of the job. You know, you have to keep questioning. You have to keep searching. You have to keep trying to find that essential truth. And it leads to all kinds of, you know, and um, having Adam as your rock, uh, man, it's, it's priceless, brother. I got to say, it's just priceless. Here's my rock. Hey, who's that? <laughs> it's a Skittles. Skittles. Oh, Skittles, yeah. am I embarrassing you again? It's like, will you, dad, will you please? Listen, I need some hits. 
and subscribers and people have smashed the like button and I can only do it with your help, Skittles. Can you give us some meow or something? The Skittles is like, look, you're exploiting me. <laughs> what a diva. Skittles, are you being a diva? What a diva. <laughs> <laughs> oh my poor kitty i'll put you down all i have to do is just stick my little pinky finger out and he rubs against it See? Yeah. that's all it takes i i wish women worked the same way but they yeah don't. no they absolutely don't yeah you gotta Tempta put that, temptation unless there's a credit that. card attached to that pinky no i didn't say that i didn't say that yeah, I didn't, uh, ladies i did not say that <laughs> Temptations don't work on them. What does <laughs> anymore? I, I, I'm, 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 I've never, I've never gotten there. I've never gotten there. I, I don't know anybody who has. Um, I think you just, you know, I look at, you know, Adam. I, you had Adam and Deb on, mm -hmm. right together. Yeah. Like I said, I got to go back and look at that tape because they are hilarious. But here, here's the deal, man. At the end of the day, they're still together. A lot of my friends are, are coupled and have been for years and years, and I have no idea how they've yeah. done Well, when I had Adam and Deb on, it was when I was at the station. When the station went into lockdown, yeah, I had uh, no way to do this. It was uh, Nancy McLaughlin from Friday the 13th, part six, Jason Lives, who said to me, if she could do Zoom, I can do Zoom. So all my 20, everything from beginning of 2021, I've been doing on Zoom. So, um, I mean, thank God for it, really. Yeah. Yeah. The rest of them, I had done audio at the station. So uh, that you could certainly hear the interviews, you know, it's just, you can't see it. That's like we are like this, but I'm planning to have them back on because I'm involved in Hearts of Darkness, the making of the final Friday. So, oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. I got my name on that, and uh, I got my name on something else I'm going to be bringing up later that you're attached to as well. But um, anyway, um, um, how did you get cast in Secret Santa? Like, what made Adam pick you? Uh, it, I, for that part, dude, you got me. I thought it was hilarious. He got me to script and, and uh, he said, I'm, you know, and Adam, you know, that's the thing. Adam writes specifically for your voice um, because he's like, again, he's working with you on a weekly basis. He's seeing your work on a weekly basis. And uh, he said, yeah, you know, we'll, you know, he'll give you a call and say, hey, hey, he never leaves messages. His messages are, hey, bud, call me back. And then you call him back and then he tells you the thing. And he said, I got something. He says, I'm writing something for you. I think it's, it's, it's really special. I think you're going to like it. And you're going to get to work with Tracy, who was the, my ex who brought me into class. And I said, that sounds great, man. And he sent me over the script and I just remember reading it. And, and I started laughing 30 seconds into, into reading this thing. I could see how this was going to play out. I was like, oh, this is hilarious. What a great little, little spot. He says, I got a great spot for you, Kevin. Um, I think he was just trying to get me up there so I could work crew. So I gave him just <laughs> enough. But no, it was great, man. And, and it was a great kill. Mm -hmm. It's one of my favorite kills in the show. It's, it's a great kill. You know, if you just had have listened to your wife and stayed <laughs> inside <laughs> there, don't answer the door. Come on, man. Yeah. But, you know, you the know, neighbor calls. You need to have a peephole on your door. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, it was funny too because, um, and and you know we're we're working with the great Bob Kurtzman and and um, Bob Bob, I think Bob enjoyed himself more on that film than I'll bet he. If if you get that interview, that's the interview to get. Um, I think he had more fun on that film than just about any film he's he's ever worked on, or at least as much. And he would. Like when we were setting up the shot, he was looking, you know, he's setting up the blood and buckets and hoses and, you know, he's doing his work. He's doing his gig. We're doing our gig. We're setting this thing up. And then we did the first run of the scene. And I looked over at Bob and he was down there and he was like, 
like he was, Bob never smiles. You got to understand, he does when he's working, Bob don't smile, man. He was grinning. He was looking around. He, he, I think he really, really got the wind of this thing. It was really fun. And when we saw the final edit, I mean, it was, it was a, it was, you know, it was that cross between hilarious and, oh, oh, that, those are the good kills when the whole audience goes, oh, shit. Yeah, that was a good one, man. And you know what? It's interesting too, because Adam even managed to uh, involve his brother Kip without actually involving him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah Kip, Kip. Kip's head got used in the movie from Jason Goes to Hell. <laughs> Kip is what? never far from Adam, um, what in whether good or bad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but um, nonetheless, you know, you get a great cast in this movie, and uh, yeah. you know, I've um, of course I've interviewed Adam, and of course I've interviewed Deborah Sullivan, who I've nicknamed the Cackle Queen. That's yeah. her name. That's what I call her, the Cackle Queen. It, it is not. It is no. It is no secret amongst this group, um, especially when she's got a couple toddies in her. Yeah. Yeah, that's when it's the Christmas parties. The Christmas parties when the karaoke's going and and uh, the drinks are flowing. That's when Deborah gets. That's when she gets going. But there's a shot, and I've seen it a million times from this movie, where her and Pat Destro are yeah. laughing in each other's face, and yeah, and her mouth is so wide. I've I brought this up to them too, you know. It's like uh, and Adam said, yeah, he, he makes sure he uses stuff like that when he has Deborah in his movie. And, and Greg, I'm telling you, man, I'm telling you that I've seen that live before it was ever filmed. That's those two together anyway. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, but with Pat Destro's uh, house, I understand. <laughs> yeah, Pat's house, Pat, Pat and Bob's house up in, in Big Bear. Gorgeous right on you know on the lake there um i mean we couldn't my god we couldn't have had a more gorgeous setting could we and uh jay you know um jason Honey, honeycutt's um shooting of this thing i mean when we when he set that that first i think that might have been wasn't the end of the shoot might have been in the first couple of days when he sent that drone out over the lake and brought it back a few times. We had no idea what we were going to get out of that. When you're looking on it on the you know on the little screen, you can't really you can't get the scope, but you can't really tell the scope of what he was getting. But that drone work that he did, um, just the shooting in general, uh, I, you know, it's 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 a gorgeous movie. I mean, on top of being a you know a fun, a thriller, great kills, good horror movie, it's gorgeous from this first shot to the last and the Christmas, the Christmas sort of ornamentation around it sort of adds to it. And, and uh, God, I remember going to that first screening and just being like, man, this is, this is actually a really pretty movie. Like it's gorgeously shot. It's beautiful, rich color. And, and we got, by the way, we got there. I, I came in in the second half. So they've already been up there shooting for a week and we had no idea what they'd already got like the, all the dinner table stuff. We had no idea what they'd already gotten when we got there, what was already in the can. And then we did the last, I think I got up there the, the second Thursday and stayed through Monday, stayed through the wrap on Monday. So, you know, it was sort of segmented. We knew what we had. We had no idea what the front end of that thing, what they'd already got. And it's that dinner table scene is still, it's one of my favorite pieces of film ever. Mm -hmm. Right well, up to Curtis, right up to Curtis. Well, you know what? Uh, one of the elements uh, I like to bring up, I was so happy to get Tim Eilers on here because yeah. his music provides so much mood to this movie. I spe specifically love the shot of Brian Seaton in that uh, Winnebago there driving towards there and she just shows she's just not looking forward to this and it cut to this uh, like heavy metal uh track playing you know and you, you know you know greg ryan seaton is a rock and roll singer and a hell of a good one too 
You know what? I, I've been in chats to get her on here finally, because that was one of the people that. Yeah, you got to get her on. You have to yeah. get her on. And, and I, an interesting girl as well. I had a phone conversation with her. I I was at work one night and I um, I had your number and her number from uh, Curtis, plus your emails. And I thought, well, I'll see if I can book these folks. Well, because I've been an essential worker through this whole mess that's going yeah. on and out there. And uh, I work as a cleaner. So, uh, so I can just stick my earphones in and listen to podcasts and stuff. And I thought, well, I think I'll... Uh, do my work and I'll call and see if I can get an interview going with these people, get one scheduled. And so, uh, Ryan said, Ryan said, she's going to check out some of my interview stuff on online and then get back to me. So I'm looking forward to getting her scheduled on here. Yeah, no, she's, she'd been an interesting interview, man, but talk to me more about Tim. Cause we, we missed him, you know, Tim, Tim, busted a move down to Atlanta. He's doing really well. And um, we, we miss him. He's a good guy. And he's a man, he is good at what he does. He's a smart cat. And I mean, that's just by the way, the music composition is just part of what as you found out, I'm sure it's just part, just this, this, this much of what Tim Eilers is capable of capable yep. of that cat, you know, we've seen his stuff, his actual stuff, his his uh, his set dressing and his his uh, his gadgets on big movies, um, and it's amazing, man. But oh we, yeah, we went up to his studio to record all that stuff, and it was I did uh, I did the Andy Williams. Um, oh God, what was that? I'll think of it in a second. But you know, doing all the Christmas caroling—that's all us. <laughs> that's, all us. That's, all Tim, that's all Tim Eilers directing all of our cast to sing all of those Christmas carols that you hear on, on the, on the track, on the soundtrack. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Top to bottom, man. And skeleton crew all the way through. Oh, Tim, Tim was uh, really the backbone when it come to what this movie sounded like. And um, so I say the music, you know, was terrific. And uh yeah, um, and of course, Ryan Seaton was involved in two scenes that referenced two other horror films. One was uh, uh, Halloween, and the other was The Thing. The Thing, right? Yeah. Right? With the... One of my favorite horror movies. Oh, my God. I used to... Ugh, man, I spent a lot... I've watched The Thing a... As many times as I've watched any movie in my life, I love that movie to death. I loved it from the moment I went to see it back in, I saw it, you know, premiere. That's how old I am, dating myself again. Oh, wow. I saw, yeah, I saw the premiere of that thing. And, and I remember I was working at a health club in Billings, where I'm from, Billings, Montana. Uh-huh. And uh, we had a Wednesday movie night, community movie night. <laughs> Guess what I brought in? The thing. Absolutely absolutely man and and uh people were half the people were riveted and loved it and the other half were like (sighs) people left people got up and left and i was like yeah that's that's i kind of wanted that i kind of wanted that you know well adam had used um referenced halloween when brian got to do the sit-up thing you know Mm -hmm. and uh one where um she's one of the people that tied to a chair and she utters that famous line (laughs) and you know that's the thing it's it's i love throwbacks yeah i love callbacks i i love having those easter eggs inside of a film it's something that it's 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 for us it's for guys like you and me who love this stuff from the bottom up to see that and that's just part of the sort of the movie experience that deepens as you go, you know, as you get older and more experienced, you go back and watch these things and go, oh, not only am I loving the horror, not only am I loving the shooting, I'm also loving that I know that this is a throwback. This is a callback to Halloween. I know this is a callback to the thing, you know, one of my favorite movies. Yep. Yep. So, um, yeah, they, Ryan Seaton was great in this. And then of course you had, uh, Drew Lynch. Uh, really? I love the fact that Adam was able to use his stutter 
to we were not add shying to away from that and that you know that Drew had been it was also a member of our troop <clears throat> and uh you know the backstory on that it's, it's it's an injury it's not you know hereditary it's not congenital and and um um Drew's Drew's management of that um and turning that from from what could could have been a detriment to, this is a comedian this is a man this is a I mean, oh, it's just amazing. This is a guy who uses his voice um, as his medium mm -hmm. um, to take that what what should have could have could have been a career ender to take that and turn it into the pluses um, that he had. It's just it's mind boggling. He's another he's, you know, he's one of my heroes. He's a guy who who um, is consistently funny. Yep. He's a funny guy and he's a good guy. Like he's a nice man, you know, and uh, his work on this thing was stellar and he's a pro. He's a professional. He's a pro. And he gets brought up there by Cruz Fortier, <clears throat> AKA uncle Carter. Uncle Carter? I, I, I've had him on here a couple times and um, first kill. Oh yeah. Yeah. He, he goes too soon. I think I, I, I know I'd love to see more of him too, man. <clears throat> I, I said um, to him, I said, that line, he says, uh, when he comes out of the washroom, I bound up so, uh, so fierce. <laughs> I'm like, that's the perfect line for when you're at somebody's. <laughs> at the dinner table, right? At the, at the Christmas dinner table. And I had text Adam. And I said, look, I have an idea after watching uh, Secret Santa and that dinner scene. I said, I have an idea for your next film. Let's let's do uh, Uncle Carter versus lesbians versus France. <laughs> Start writing. Go. <laughs> and uh, um, I told Curtis about this. And Curtis says, that's a great idea. Everybody wins. <laughs> and I say, except for the washrooms. Except for the he washrooms. said, yes, the washrooms lose, but everybody, everything else wins. <laughs> so... Um, yeah, I enjoyed the dinner scene. That big, long, that must have been uh, uh, hours. That's a, couple, that's a couple days worth of shooting there, yeah, right there. And, and um, you know, we lost, and I'm sure Curtis has talked about it, we lost John Gilbert. John Gilbert, uh, Papa, yeah. The, 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 head of the, the head of the table there <clears throat> this, this last year. Um, and, and what, ha you know, how we went about making, making that work is also, it's a whole other story. I'm sure Adam talked about it, but how they went about making that work was, again, it's just a feat of, of, of filmmaking, but it's a feat of, of teamwork, you know, man, it's, it was about family and, 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 and making, <laughs> not giving up as a group, not giving up as a team, not giving up as a family. Um, when things got tough and it was not an easy shoot, man. You know, we were in the winter time in Big Bear outdoors a lot. People fell. I fell. God, I can't tell you how many times I went down. Adam went down. Everybody fell at least once on the ice, trying to hustle around, trying to hustle equipment around. Um, I went down a couple of weeks ago and uh, I was getting done at a, a workplace and uh, I was going out into the parking lot and down I went and yeah. uh, scratched my nose up. I was lucky I didn't break anything. But you went down on your face. Oh, yeah. no, dude. My yeah, face, never, my yeah, forearm. Another, another thing I don't miss about living in Montana is the idea of, of once a once a winter at least. Yeah, my my uh, my nose got scratched up. My my forearms hit my chest hit and my knees hit and my right chin you know like yeah. i was feeling that but oh, dude I must have... oh i'm sorry yeah must have hurt like hell and well, it's also yeah. it's, it's, it's it's that it's, it's also the hurt sort of like pride of oh my god I just wiped out yep but ice is brutal man Yep, and uh, Show, course, it has no friends, shows no favors. No, no, it doesn't. But um, but nonetheless, you know, as uh, luckily nothing broken, and uh, 
and uh, I was able to go on and do my next work location. <laughs> Thank God. Thank God, man. Yep. But uh, but nonetheless, you know, um, what were your memories of John uh, in this movie? Because when he comes in, the exchange between him and Deborah that was brutal. <laughs> I'll tell you, man. I again, I I, I came in late. Um, uh, they'd already been shooting a week. They'd already been up there a week, and so we were in the kill stage. Mm -hmm. I hadn't seen the first one yet, but we were in. You know, John gets a couple more in, and and uh, um, <laughs> so I was assisting when they were shooting out um, Eddie's kill. When John takes the the rock and bludgeons you know spoiler alert for those who haven't seen it um and uh john john was so john gilbert was so into this you know again we're talking about people who <clears throat> you know various levels of of professional you know work in the industry but the level of of professionalism and conscientiousness on the set was what was sort of extraordinary you know um again i wish i had my pictures i had pictures of of adam you know eddie on the ground you know john over him you know listening sort of intently to adam's direction to get you know to get it just right john wanted to get things just right and um man i miss that guy yeah uh, yeah um, and, and, and his, his work and his, at the same time, John's just a great guy. <laughs> He's just a funny, loving, fun, just a great dude. You know, you know, John ha would have us out a couple times a year. He had a great place down at seal beach, um, on the, on the water. John would have us out a couple, three times a year to just hang, just barbecue and hit the water, hit the, hit the surf, good company, good conversation. And then send us on back up the coast, and and um, yeah, I'm gonna miss that dude. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I also, of course, I've had uh, Michelle Renee Allaire on here a couple times. The um, gorgeous and amazing Michelle yeah. Renee Allaire. Yeah, um, and of course, she was the star. <laughs> quote unquote <laughs> i'm not gonna i'm not gonna alert anybody to that spoiler you gotta yeah see, you gotta see that for yourself man yeah that was a great moment and uh boy i love it when she and nate end up in a situation where they're duking it out and he's like give it to me harder and she's like punching the Crap out of and uh i'm not gonna give away her reveal either but boy <laughs> i don't yeah, know man. a lot of humor michelle you know michelle trains so hard for you know michelle's god michelle again i i know i'm glowing but these are my this is my family these are my teammates michelle's amazing like she's this is not just some actress who's just doing michelle's a mom She's got her business. She has a whole, you know what I mean? This is stuff I, I hand it to people. Look, I'm just, I'm a dude. I do my, I'm an actor. I do my own thing. I have my own, you know, she's like, she has a, a life that goes on, you know, she's got kids to raise and um, it just blows me away that people are able to, to bring that much that much creativity. Again, I use this word. I'm using this word a lot. Professionals. Um, that much conscientiousness to 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 this work. She trained so hard to do this and to get it right. Man, um, it was it was adorable, but it was also inspiring. You know. By the way, again, like I said, we're all sleeping in bunks and on the floors and on you know in racks. I had a sofa. My first couple nights, I had a sofa that had a bend in it. My ass was 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 four feet below my head and feet, you know, below my head and feet while I'm sleeping on this supposed sofa down in in the basement of Pat's house in the makeup room, by the way. So now why did I, it have a bend in it? You know, I never got any sleep because you know, bang, whatever time the you know we we had you know operations would stop, Bob would come in and boot me out of my bed, 
so he could start to work. Um, but Michelle killed it. You know, I just worked on a, on a gig with her uh, right, right as we were shutting down. We got, you know, we were one of the first um, operating productions after COVID. We were the, one of the first productions working off of the new SAG AFTRA COVID protocols mm -hmm. and uh, for safe sets. Um, and that movie is, is making its way around. Michelle also killed it in that one too. So I've worked closely with her on a, on a bunch of stuff, man. And I couldn't, I couldn't have more admiration for her as a, as a person than I do. She's just a, just a cool lady, man. And a good, good person. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and, easily, and easily crushable, isn't she? <laughs> she's yeah. Easily um... going to crush on that one. She's. She's something else, man. She's amazing. She was I see your good... cheeks are a little red right now, Greg. Yeah, when um, she's... Tell me about it. Tell <laughs> me about the... it. <laughs> when she and Nate are driving there at the beginning, you just see her ass bumping up in the air. <laughs> yeah. And not afraid. I mean, think about how fearless. This is not, you know, by the way, she's also not 26. The, the level... Fold. Yeah, right. I, I know she looks it again, not fair, not at all fair. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the, the, the level of courage that it takes to to do explicit work. It takes a lot of cojones, man. Um, it really does. It takes a lot of a lot of uh, guts to do that kind of work and 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 to make it work. You know, to be that comfortable with yourself. Um, to make that shit work is is difficult on on your best days now you put it you set it up in the middle of winter up in big bear and you're you've been sleeping on a you know in a bunk bed for the last week and of course uh i heard that um michael rady i think was the last one to sh get there because uh he had a meeting um I think that that guy was told at Paramount, and then yeah. he had to drive up in this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and Michael. of course, yeah, he got to it, toss Michael around. Michael's great. Michael's another true pro, and and um, you know, our scene involved, you know, not just violence done to me, but some violence, you know, and some 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 choreography. And um, again, you couldn't have a better group of partners, but you couldn't have a better partner pro when you're trying to put together that kind of thing on ice, which you and I have both experienced the worst of where that thing is happening on real snow and real ice. Mm -hmm. That wasn't fake snow and fake ice. That was real snow and real ice and trying to make that work and to stay safe, which is the most important thing. That shit ain't easy, man. And Michael was again, he's a pro, man. He uh he brought it, he brought the fire, and <laughs> his turn from the nicest guy in the world, the nicest boyfriend in the world, right? Yep. Is just it's one of my favorite parts of the film, man. And of course, A Leslie Kai's A know? Leslie, yeah. Yeah. Um, or, um she's another one she gets to go through this whole thing she was hoping for a nice family reunion which i don't think they'd think that the sp spike the yeah. punch needed spike for this no, to go wrong <laughs> no no that's a that that's a what, what is the alanis morris it's not alanis morris said it's uh there's another singer it's a, a, my, a family built like an avalanche that was that's the epitome of that for that line um that fit you know and you get you, you know it's 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 prefaced as they drive in that this is going to be hellacious however it goes but you're right that the punch really didn't need to be spiked for there to be murder and death in, amongst this group of assholes uh, <laughs> ace you know ace of again she she makes that film happen and and um you know you're looking at a you're looking at a, a future star when you're looking at a you know, um, she's another one who's 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 work and work work and work ethic. Right. It's not just the work. It's not just I'm just blowing my talent out there, man. 
for everybody to see. That's oh, she did more than that. Yeah, she apparently was the one that was uh, uh, under the bed whose hand you see get the keys whenever uh, Nate and uh, Michelle are having yeah. their uh, also new working sexy. crew, also working crew, also making movie magic on the side. You know what I mean? Also, so she you know, ended up getting up, to see that. right. And by the way, people are in the background whipping up snacks for everybody, whipping up food for everybody. Yeah, but on top of it, this girl's work. Um, it's, it's evident. It's it's fully apparent when you watch the film how good she is, and she is that good. She is that good. It's a great yeah. actor. She's a terrific actor. Yeah, the around the table there that was terrific. Everybody got their moment, and uh, that's one of the, one of the things I love about this movie is people get their moment. You know, this is good um, writing. The, that the, is the great team of Adam Marcus and, and Deborah Sullivan. This is good writing. Yeah. And of course, you know, Pat Destro, uh, her and uh, and uh, my pal Pat. Yeah. I got to get Pat on here at some point. Definitely. You know, I haven't done He's that yet. Got to. And um, <laughs> I got to talk about Pippi. Pippi. <laughs> So I was working crew. I was working uh, AD when, when we did Pippi's too, um, all of her stuff. And, it, you know, and knowing Pippi, Pippi is, you know, she's, she's very conservative, let's call it, in her sort of approach to you. You don't, I didn't, you know, I've seen her work and I, I you know, I knew what she was capable of. She always, pick, by the way, she always picks really, really dirty, ribald sort of stuff to work on in class. It's hilarious because when you talk to her, she's very like put together. She's very, you know, you, none of that. You see none of that in your interaction, your personal interaction with her. The stuff that was coming out of her on the night, well, this is what, this is the combination of, 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 of talent, um, knowing the script and then and, and and then letting it go, letting it all go, and she just let it go. That the, the nights that we were shooting, um, man, that was fun to watch. It was fun to see happen on the spot, and then see it, see how Adam captured it on film later. Um, I loved uh, her scene when she's in the the van and she's doing her little. <laughs> And did she hit? Yeah, Pippi, I think like, Pippi had a line where where, and I was like two feet away. I don't know. I was holding some, you know, holding something out of camera, and Pippi sort of slip sliding down the hill, and her and Eddie are having that that argument, you know. Mm -hmm. And Pippi's line, I don't remember what the actual line was, but she she capped it with, <laughs> she made this like noise. <laughs> I just I remember looking back at Adam like, and Adam, I looked back at Adam, and Adam was behind the camera doing doing an Adam laugh, you know, trying not to not to ruin the take by laughing too loud, but Adam was doing the, the, the you know. Yeah. You know, Pippi, Adam was really pleased. Pippi is one of the people that uh, Curtis connected me with too, but um, he said that, um, you know, Pippi's got some stuff going on with family right now and, and not able to do the show right now. And I said, look, this is a uh, I'll have her on any time, you yeah. know, <laughs> any time. if I big. don't get her till next year, I'm good, you know, you know. But uh, she was, of course, one of the hired help. <laughs> there was no help yeah. in this family. Caters, and, yeah. Yeah. The catering team. J J um, uh, 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 Freddie. Yeah. Freddie James's catering team. Um, yeah. It was just such a highlight, such a highlight in the film. And mm. more, more good kills coming. And oh, God, you really got me reminiscing now about that weekend, that glorious weekend of shooting. I love this. I watched this at Christmas time. I showed it to my brother. Uh, I had such a great time with this movie, you know, and I'm looking forward to Adam's next movie, Fat Cat Massacre, which he says that's, it's going to have Lindsay Hollister in there, which oh, I've interviewed a couple times. Oh, you yeah. Know? You've interviewed Lindsay. Good. Yeah, Lindsay's a talent. I knew her from a couple of Uva Bowl movies, you know. And so I said to Adam, I said, Oh, you gotta have Lindsay Hollister. That's phenomenal, you know. And uh, 
But if it's anything like this, I'm I'm invested, you know. Yeah, we're I both. Huh? I said I think it's going to be it's going to be that plus. Now we're both involved in a film together. You just give me a second because I didn't get prepared for this, but you just give me a half a second here. You got it. You got you got it, brother. Yeah. Now, I'm a co-producer. Oh, <laughs> wow. No. Is that, is that our connection, dude? Ah, uh, look at those. Those are awesome. Yeah. Oh, I haven't got one of those yet. Oh, that's awesome, brother. He's a 13 fanboy. Yep. That's another, another winter shoot. Another shoot up in the snow. Now, you know, you know, the, uh, the story about that with, 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 uh, with Deborah, but did you know that, that uh, D Wallace was one of my coaches? One of my, actors? I have, I've interviewed D Wallace twice, 2015 and last year. Oh, right. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> she remembered me because um, I also met her at Hororama 2018. And one of the things <laughs> I had said to her, I said, she's the only one who I've ever met at a con who uh, had a debit machine at her table. Like you could swipe <laughs> your card you when you. Your card. And I, I love that because I, I hate carrying cash on me, yeah. you know? I'm the same. I'm that dude. I'm that yep. dude. And uh, she had a debit machine. I was like, boy, I wish more would do this, you know? Brilliant idea. Yep. So I um, I have met her. I love Dee Wallace. And uh, she's like done a movie honor. down here. Yeah. So um, I had the pleasure of meeting Dee, and I've had her on here a couple times. And I've had uh, Debbie Sue Voorhees on here five times. Have you? Damn. And I think it was on the third time that she had uh, mentioned 13 Fanboy. And the moment she dropped Tracy Savage's name, I was in because I had a crush Tracy? on Tracy. Sa yeah. I had a big crush on Tracy Savage. And she's been on here three times, Boxing Day, all three times. You oh, know? yeah, right yeah that's that's making the rounds boxing day yeah and um that was how i got involved and um yeah, I you know, d, d was d was my 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 second teacher in la my second acting teacher in la mm -hmm. um through the 90s into the 2000s and we'd stayed friends and stayed you know so these hard to stay in touch with because she's always moving mm -hmm. and um she's always doing something and um, I had no idea that the D in the film, you know, we get we didn't get much when I auditioned for this. I had no idea that the D that I was talking about in a film was D Wallace, was my old coach, was my old teacher. One of my, again, one of my favorite people on planet Earth. And so, <laughs> and, and so I thought, you know, once I sort of spilled the story, I thought that that would, you know, just, you know, so the first day when, when, when my man, Nigel and Deborah and I got, you know, drove from LA to Ruidoso, New Mexico. Um, we, we, we drove up to the house where we were shooting and I walked through the door and D was just coming up the stairs. She just finished his scene. She just was coming up the stairs. And I went, Hey D, you know, like here I am. And she went, oh, hello, how are you? And kept walking. And I was like, D Wallace Stone. And she turned around and she was like, oh my God. And then it all, you know, then she finally recognized who I was. She had no idea either. Deborah hadn't told her the, the story either. So it was just like, it was, 
it was one of those things that you kind of dream about, you know, I would, you know, I always wanted to do a movie with, are you kidding me? I always wanted to do a movie with D. And suddenly I got my chance. I'm with my 13 fanboy, you know, sort of just complete happenstance. Reconnecting with her was one of the joys of, of doing that movie. Yeah. Um, and, and watching how, watching her work and watching how good she is. And again, pro. Um, yeah. I um, got on as a co-producer and I wasn't down there, of course, but, and uh, my pictures and it covered in blood. In, in a scene which, so which scene which uh... um it's at the tracy savage's house uh you see it on the mantle it's covered in blood yeah yeah that's you yeah that and a bunch of others carrie yates and her family <laughs> is one of the pictures as well you splattered. know yeah splattered i must have interviewed some 25 people from that movie from from 13 yeah yeah and now you and, got another one i i can't that's awesome i can't believe it man yeah you know it's funny you gotta, too because you gotta you gotta hook me up with one of those bags man i didn't get a t-shirt man i gotta i gotta jump on deborah about that i don't know i just merely had um disconnected and just t told uh uh, did a post where I told Deborah not to send the uh, perks to me, you know. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, yeah, I was involved with the movie, and um, I'm a little very, very disappointed in Judy Aronson, I'll tell you that, and that's for personal reasons. Um, but it, it, it's led to me to just that and among other things led me to kind of distance myself a little bit. But um, uh, nonetheless, uh, um, I am very, very happy that I had a lot of behind the scenes people on the show from uh, 13 Fanboy. And um, I'm very proud of people like Ron Sloan and Ron Park Lincoln. What a, yeah, Ron's just a, what a mensch. What a great guy. Stay I was I was promoting uh, a charity that came up after the Ice Bucket Challenge called the uh, the Doubtfire Face Challenge for Suicide and Depression Awareness. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're ALS. My dad's got ALS and has had it for, uh, as of this year, eight years. Oh dear. You know, my mom's got Parkinson's, so my brother takes care of them. And anyway, after Robin Williams left us, uh, somebody had started the Doubt Fireface Challenge, and it involved you take a pie in the face and you nominate three people. And um, I, mm -hmm. I had a lot of behind the scenes people from 13 Fanboy do it. I was trying to get some of the bigger names involved. Because that's what people want to see, you know. Yeah. And I've had a few people that I've interviewed do it. Lisa Langlois, who who was the one that invited me to that that horror con, um, she did it. Nancy McLaughlin did it in front of props from Jason Lives. Um, Sandy Johnson did it. She was Judith Myers. Yeah. And her husband was dressed up as Michael Myers. And <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Sandy, Sandy nominated Felissa Rose, was one of the people he, she nominated. And I met Felissa at Frightmare in the Falls and I showed her Sandy's video. And Felissa said she's totally into doing this. <clears throat> well, I was hoping to get a lot of the bigger names on 13 Fanboy involved in this. And, uh, I ended up being disappointed as a result. That's too bad. Ron Sloan did do it. And I've learned a lot about Ron Sloan through this shoot because he sent me a, a soup label thing for Ethel stew that Jason Bradford had made up. He, he wanted my address so he could send me one. Ron Sloan is very, very considerate. He's a sweetheart of a guy. He yep. really, really is. And Lar Park Lincoln said, as soon as she's feeling better, because she just went through a spinal surgery. Oi, I didn't yeah, know that yeah. She also wants to do the Doubtfire she Challenge. Recovery, Lar. Yeah. And Lar said she's down for it. But 
I had a situation where Judy Aronson, I sent her a cameo about it. And she was down to doing it, but due to COVID, she couldn't do it then, which was fine. I get it. But she promised she would do it. Well, a year had passed. And I thought, well, things are starting to dwindle down a little bit. I thought I'd touch base with her about it again. And her response was quite a bit different. Said this didn't feel right for her, which I don't understand. And she... Um, asked me to withdraw my request and this and that. And I'm, I'm going to do a lot more than withdraw my request. I'm going to withdraw draw any uh, financial support she gets out of me at a con. Um, that's just a shame. That's, 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 an, it's just. It's I'm an very awful. disappointed in her, especially after Ted White and Vernon Wells spoke so well of her, you know, and um like like I said, um, it's caused me to distance myself from 13 Fanboy. In fact, I told Debbie Sue, don't send the perks to me. Don't send the perks to me. So don't go through you for the bag and the shirt then. Uh, just go to Debbie Sue. <laughs> I'll go to Deb. I'll go to Deb. I'm sorry you know, Rob, that, that you that, that you had that experience. This really was for am. suicide and depression awareness. Yeah, that's a good cause. You know, and um, nobody, I've done it twice, but nobody wants to see me do it. So I, I was, um, that's okay. Uh, I see Judy at a con. I'm going to have a fun time uh, bringing this up publicly. You know, uh, I know how to play this game. So I'm not, I'm not pleased with her. That's a shame. And um, I love Tracy Savage, love Tracy Savage. But, Tracy's great. But she, um, she's taken a pass on it as well, and that broke my heart. But Tracy didn't anger me the way Judy Aronson did. Judy Aronson, I felt jerked around by, you know. Well, that's too bad, man. So I'm kind of like, you know what? It, it's telling because I've been told by somebody Involved with 13 Fanboy, I spent about three grand on this movie. And Scotty McCoy, who uh, does Slasher Scotty, he's been on here numerous times. He said it cost him less than $5 for a paper plate and whipped cream to do that. Does so, take much. So um, I, th I, I hope Judy Aronson got paid well with the money I put into that. Because it'll never happen again. No, no, you know, it'll never happen again. Greg, how did you? How did you? Now, or, how did you get involved with Thirteen in the first place? Debbie Sue was on my show five times. I think about the third just from, time. Just, just at, before, oh, right before she even started Thirteen. She right? started. Right. Uh, I was one of the first people to come on board. I think, and um, the moment she met, she started going through people that were involved with it. And when she mentioned Tracy Savage, my heart just started skipping a beat. And you're in. Yeah, I'm in, you know. And um, so uh, I got involved with that. And um, um, that's how that it just kind of went from there. I wasn't down there in Ruta Doso for the filming. It was one of the perks, but I couldn't get away. You know, I, I work as a cleaner. Yeah. I'm needed here, but, but, uh, but I kind of relived everything just through Jason Bradford and Joel Paul Rising and Riley C. Morris and, and a lot of the, you know, Chris Norris and all the behind the scenes people, you know? Yeah, it was a, it was a cool shoot, man. I, I, um, the, it's, if you get a chance, Greg, it's, it, it's, it's a cool little town. It's just this little slice of Americana that's so sort of, you know, it's somewhere in between Texas. It's somewhere, you know, but it's this gorgeous little slice of, of Americana that has history, you know, the history of, of Billy the Kid in Lincoln. Mm -hmm. um, it, it is, it, and it's, 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 you know, when you do the, when you do the historic walk, you know, and you sort of go around, you can drive all the way around town mm -hmm. up at the top of the hill is this a gorgeous performance center, like state-of-the-art performance center. And I don't know if you know the name uh, uh, 
Bill Chihuly. He's a glass blower, glass, uh, very famous actually. Mm -hmm. His work is is featured up there. Um, I couldn't believe it, man. We were driving by. I said, what the hell is that? Was sort of sitting low on the hillside there. We drove in there and it was this gigantic performance center. So Ruidoso is not just this sleepy little little town. It's kind of hopping. They've got great restaurants. I'm, like, I'm selling the town. They better give me a, a free room next time I go there. Um, but it's a cool place to sort of like base this thing and to live. You know, it's one of those places where you look at it and you go, I could, I could retire here. I could what see was, myself. What was it like working with Debbie Sue Voorhees as a director? Listen, man, that, that lady um so i don't know if this is talking out of school you could you could edit this out if it if, if, it, if it is but i have no idea how to edit these <laughs> <laughs> so we're it's basically live great yeah but look let's just let me just let's just say that the first week of shooting was not going particularly well mm -hmm. and it was because she didn't have a crew of dudes who were supporting her as a director i'll just say that flat out that's what it was about and she man this, this lady has courage again courage um she changed that she changed that and the next time we came up she had a whole new crew of the guys that you were talking about um who were on board with what she was doing who saw her vision were on board with what she was doing do you know greg what it takes to halt a production that's your own production that's your baby and say, I'm starting over. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop, I'm dropping the, the, I'm dropping this crew and I'm starting with a new crew that I can work with. That, that she was smart. Huge. It's smart, yeah. but it's a that's a that takes again, that takes a lot of cojones to make that decision, man. And she did it, and you you see the result. It was an entirely different thing going up the second time when we went up the next time. Mm -hmm. Um and uh, her sense of what she wanted. It's great as an actor. One of the worst things that you can, that, that happens when you're an actor is walking onto a set with a director who doesn't know what he wants or she wants, with a director that doesn't, doesn't know what he or she is doing. And that was not the case here. And it never felt like that at any stage of, this, of, of the game. She always knew what she was doing. Now she didn't have to fight to get what she wanted on film. And it was just such a huge, I, I have so much admiration for her. Um, I was calling her, I was calling her high princess Deborah, and she corrected me. She said, I don't want to be a princess. I said, oh, then you are my queen. Um, she really kicked ass, man. And, and, uh, and the result is in, you know, she um, has my eternal admiration and my eternal gratitude. Yep. Well, I thought she did a great job with this film. Um, I if I I never stream stuff and I streamed this one. Um, I was a little disappointed um, that it uh, didn't play in Canada here. It never did. Oh, I wanted to see it on the big screen. And I told Debbie Sue that it. Uh, I call her Debbie Sue Voorhees because that's what she was on Friday the Thirteenth Part Five. Right. Yeah, I'm like one of the few people that calls. Who knows me it's that, Debbie but, Sue? Yeah, but anyway. Um, I was in Toronto for Frightmare in the Falls, uh, the end of October and uh, beginning of November last year, which was about a week after the film's release. And I had said that, uh, you know, Toronto would be a great place for that. And um, it played in some places in the States and some places in the UK and not Canada. And um, I'm going to be frank. I regret streaming it because I probably should have held my guns and, and, and watched it on a, on a big screen. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's how I, like, I still go to the movies, even during COVID when Me the too. theater was open, I still go to the movies, Me too. you know, that's what they're built for, man. Yep. Well, that is what they're built for. I've seen Jason lives Friday the 13th part six many times. But when I was in Toronto in 2019, I got to attend a midnight screening and really see it. Yeah, right. It's a whole different experience, huh? Yeah. I wanted that experience with 13 Fanboy, you know? 
we were lucky enough to get a, a, a screening of that. And, and by the way, man, you know, we're in a whole different time now. And, and, and that movie still has time. That's still, that movie still got time to make it up to, to Toronto. As you see with, look, man, we did, we did Secret Santa in 2016 for release in, in early 2017, uh, late 2017, I think. Um, it's still making the rounds. People are still talking about it. So, so we don't know what the life of, of 13 fanboy is going to be, but you know, we can always hope. And, and, and if it has the legs, we think it does, it will find its way. It'll find its well, way. Here's the reason I, I streamed it. And this is why, um, I work as a cleaner. I work in the back shift and I'll listen. I like listening to podcasts as I'm doing my cleaning because right. it helps me get through the night and i got various ones i listen to a lot of them are film related well when halloween kills came out everybody and their dog was spoiling the hell out of that mm. and they could yeah. say don't listen all you want it's like i got eight hours yeah. of cleaning you know <laughs> you know i yeah. want to listen to something you know something that i'm interested in but it's like um, they spoiled the hell out of it. And I, um, I still yeah. went and saw Halloween Kills, but I was dead set against streaming 13 Fanboy until I was driving home from work early that morning. Because I work back shifts. Yeah. So I should have been home in bed that morning. And when I get back to my apartment, I was like, I'm going to pay the $6.99 on YouTube. And Debbie Sue did not know this was on YouTube. But I paid the $6.99 uh -huh. on YouTube to rent this movie. I'd never done that before. But I decided since I was invested in this movie, I would prefer to see it firsthand as opposed to have everybody and their dog spoil it. You know, I was involved mm -hmm. with this movie when Tom Matthews and Adrian King were supposed to be involved, you know, so. Um, so I watched the movie and I like the finished product, don't get me wrong, you know, and I'm glad I interviewed all these behind the scenes people because I was able to see Orlando Rodriguez and uh, uh. and um, and and um, various people like that. I was able to see them make their cameos in this movie and I knew who they were. And that was special. Um, I'm glad I saw it before Judy Aronson uh, pulled her little stunt on me, but um, so um, yeah, I, I'm a little bitter about that. And I think I have a right to be, here's the thing with Judy. I'll, I'm going to share this because I don't care if she hears it or not. Ted White was Jason in Friday the 13th, the final chapter. Mm -hmm. I've had Ted White on here a couple of times. He's my favorite Jason. And uh, he's, I think, 95, 96 years old now. He's gotta he's be, a right? stunt guy. He, I love Ted White. Love him, you know? And during the interview, he asked if I wanted the contact info for Judy and for Kane Hodder. Now, he didn't give it to me over the air, of course, obviously, you know, for privacy, but he gave me their, their phone info. And um, he told me that, that Judy be more than down for it. And again, I've heard great things about her from Vernon Wells, who which worked with her in Weird Science as well. And I've met Vernon in person, and I've had him on here a couple of times. And... Um, but Ted White, to me, didn't do anything wrong. He trusted me. I didn't contact either one for the longest time because I didn't want to creep them out. But here's what changed my mind. Dick Miller passed away, I think, January 2019. I had Dick Miller on my shelf five months prior. Mm, wow. Wow. And he wasn't even on my list of people to reach out to. I just noticed he was doing a lot of the cons. And I thought, would he do my show? I'm glad I reached out because I yeah, had a right? wonderful interview with him. And I, when, I, when he had passed away, I was like, I would hate for something to happen to Kane or Judy and me having their damn phone numbers all this time. Yeah. 
I reached out to Kane, got an answering machine. I left a message, never heard back. Okay, fair enough. Judy, on the other hand, I reached out to, and I get somebody on the phone that uh, says that uh, I got a wrong number. Okay, I can believe that. Contacted Ted by phone about it. And Ted says, that's the number I get. That's the number I have. And he was a little confused about it. So I gave it some time. And then I gave her another call again. This time, somebody answered claiming to be her cousin. <laughs> I'm starting to wonder whether this was her and she was just being a fucking bitch. Excuse my language, but I can't prove that. So said that they passed the message along and I'm like, OK, you know, fair enough. I interviewed Debbie Sue, I think, on the fourth time. And I told her about it. And Debbie Sue told me to lose the numbers. And when Debbie Sue said that to me, hmm. whether she realizes it or not, I felt like the fucking villain. I felt like uh, I was being accused of stalking. No. No. Well, it, it, it left a bad feeling in me. And I did lose the numbers. I don't have them anymore. And I have a feeling that this whole thing with the Doubtfire Challenge stems from that and i think i don't think somebody judy was being very open with me because if if i was making her uncomfortable it certainly was unbeknownst to me but i'll tell you one thing i'm going to get the last laugh because if i see her at a con i'm going to be more than happy to tell people in her lineup that this was her response to a suicide and depression challenge See, two can play that game. And that is why I pulled myself away from 13 Fanboy. I told Debbie Sue, don't send any more perks to me. Don't send the DVD to me. In fact, I put a post on uh, her Facebook uh, share group. I said, anybody that wants my perks, private message Debbie Sue. I pulled away. That's I'm too that bad. I, 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 I have to say, I, and I don't know, Deb, as, as well as I, I, I should or want to, but I, I think maybe she was just being a little prophetic and, and, and warning you. Um, I, 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 yeah, I don't see anything malicious about that. I think she maybe as a friend was warning you to just, just, just move on, you know, not keep beating a dead horse. That's too bad. I hate that you had that, that experience, man, especially yep. trying to do good, especially with, especially in trying to do good. Yep. But that tote bag and this t-shirt, I wore at those cons. They yeah. got a lot of mileage out of me, whether they realize it or not, in advertising this film. And when I did my live shows, they got a lot of mileage out of me. So, well, let's let's hope you and Deb, you know, move back together and patch that up because. Well, there's a, like I said, I, I had a lot of behind the scenes people do the challenge. Jason Bradford did it. Troy Jason Elke Gray, did it. Love them. You know, Ron Sloan did it. Dave Miller, Miller did it. Um, but I, 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 it's the bigger name people that people want to see do. That's why people were invested in the ice bucket challenge. Sure. So um, I took that as a slap in the face and I'm like, you know what? Never again. Never again. Like I said, I just said, don't send the perks to me. I said, I know where I stand. If I may quote a line from Christmas Evil, I know the tune. <laughs> I know the tune that they yeah, dance to. Yep. Yep. So, uh, but, you know, Scotty McCoy had told me to you know, reach out to people on Cameo. And pro wrestler Tori Wilson didn't even question this she did the challenge just went for it that's she great. went for it you know roddy piper's daughter teal piper did the challenge roddy piper's got a i didn't even know he had a kid of course he does he's, he's got four for yeah no i met him. oh man that was a long time ago when i was running health club when i was running gyms and they used to come through that was a great group of guys man that whole sort of first bunch of wrestlers um 
I think The Rock takes after them, but they were a bunch of good guys, you know? I'm a huge Roddy Piper fan. Roddy I had his great. son and daughter on here, and I'm still in touch with Teal Piper, his daughter, yeah. Ariel Teal Piper. And um, I send her the weirdest cameos. <laughs> <laughs> tell, her, tell, her, tell her I'm a, I'm a big fan of her dad and he was really he was a really good guy well she's taken after him yeah she's what, what, taken... is she, what is she what does teal do does she she does wrestles she, he's wrestler yeah oh, of course she is why not yeah. and she, i get a kick out of her you know <laughs> but she did the doubt fire challenge and she was you know down for it and you know but but uh, yeah, thirteen fanboy left me a little bitter there, and so. Um, well, I hope I hope I hope you find some 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 uh, some closure and some comfort with that, brother, because that's that's just no that's just no good, man. It's, it's well, no Tracy help. Savage, you know, I was heartbroken that she took a pass on the challenge, but Tracy Savage, I'm not bitter against. She didn't jerk me around, but the whole Judy Aronson thing, I'm pissed about because I feel like I'm not being in on some information and you know what somebody had said ted shouldn't have given me her information no what ted didn't do anything wrong he trusted no, he, he trusted no, he trusted me and i appreciate it i'm not a stalker i'm not a 13 fanboy you know i know in the hands of somebody else maybe not but i think ted was a good judge of character and ted and vernon wells both said great things about her and, not, and i believe them but her interaction with me was not good, not, not good. good, you know, and I will not ask her on the show and uh, Lord forbid she has, is at a con that I'm at because I will make a scene. I might get kicked out, but I will make a scene. Hmm. I learned a few things from Roddy Piper <laughs> about making a Rowdy scene. Roddy. Yeah. So um, Debbie or Judy Aronson asked for it. So, but, um, that, that's the whole thing. I'm, I'm pissed about that. And like I said, I just said, don't, don't send perks to me. A lot of other pet fans, private messenger, and if they want it. They can have it They're, It's all bought and paid for, uh, out of a lot of money, but you know what? I, I'm, I just kind of walked away. My name's on the movie, my pictures bloodified in the movie. I'll take that. And, and 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 as an actor from inside the movie, thank you. You're welcome. You're <laughs> thank welcome. you, man. Thanks. You now, make it possible. Now uh, I am watching slowly because Adam Marcus did tell me that he and Skeleton Crew are going to do the challenge. Ooh, and he said yeah. he said he is going after uh, Debbie Sue and Adrian King. Adrian King's been nominated five times for this challenge. So. Um, she was the first Friday final girl. Adam's Adam's a pretty persuasive cat, as you know. Yep. But um, Lar Park Lincoln has said yes. I'm waiting for her to heal up. So um, I'm very happy that Lara. Yeah, speedy recovery, happy. Lara. I didn't know yep. she'd had surgery. Yep. But um, I was a little disappointed about that. And I just feel like it's like my contribution didn't matter. That's what it felt like. And that's yeah. how it comes across to shitty, me. That's a shitty feeling too, man. And I, yep. I, Thanks, I, Judy I Aronson, for that feeling. Thank you, Judy. But I, I, I'll, I'll bet you, I'll bet you a million bucks it's not, it's not how Deborah feels about it. Well, maybe not, but... I hope, I hope you two patch that shit up, man. I hope you guys yeah. watch that shit because that's... However, I did donate to Barks and Bitches for um, Michelle Renee Allaire. And um, I don't know if it went through or not. I might have to donate again because I said, Michelle, would you do the challenge? <laughs> Michelle said, yes. Michelle's I got I to gotta see Michelle do this. <laughs> Michelle's down. She said no. she'll do it right in the restaurant. <laughs> She's got right. She has a restaurant, so I, I I've got I've got to get Michelle to do it. But um, yeah, but um, yeah, I am involved with the uh, Hearts of Darkness, the making of the final Friday for Adam Marcus. You know, and uh, awesome. 
yeah, he's down for getting the skeleton crew in it. And I said, yes, make sure you get Deb, Deb Sullivan in this. <laughs> Deb, Deb, Deb's down. She, she loves this shit. I man. love the cackle queen. I do. Me too. Again, we're talking about my favorite people on earth here, man. And um, like, well, he, I'm involved get her at a with Christmas it. party with a Christmas party with a full glass and you'll, you'll hear the cackling. I'm involved with 13 or uh, hearts of darkness because of how well this turned out right on man right on right on i'm on as associate producer on that and um adam's very happy that i'm so adamant and promoting this it's a kick-ass movie man yep i agree you know and um i love this film and uh but, uh, and I'm happy, you know, that, you know, Debbie Sue gave us the opportunity to be part of 13 Fanboy, despite my current issues, you know, but, um, but. Um, but isn't it, isn't it great, though, that this, that connection, this sort of thing kind of connected and coincided just completely randomly. Mm hmm. And we're talking about this. I think I, this is one of the things that I love about this whole industry, man. And this community, you know, sort of in specific, the you know, the horror genre. I, it's a again, it has the feel of a family, even for good and bad. Mm -hmm. Good and bad because stuff can get personal, but it has that feel of of closeness and and everybody knows everybody, and and uh, this kind of connection is possible. And it turns me on. I just get a kick out of it that you brought that up, man. Yeah. I'm going to ride her about getting me some t-shirts, man, because those are kick-ass t-shirts. Yeah, talk about your role in the movie, because you're in this, uh, in um, 13 Fanboy. Yeah, no, I auditioned. Um, Adam brought it up. She said, it's, you know, my friend is putting this thing together. We want to send her. She asked me, you know, we have, a, we have a troop of, as you've seen, a troop of very talented actors who mm -hmm. are always up for it and always looking for work. And um, they sent the material over. Um, I, I I did a self tape and sent. Like I said, I had no idea who the D we were talking about in the self tape was at that point, and uh, <laughs> got a response back that we would, you know, we loved Will's work and we'd love to have him, and and then let me know that it was D Wallace that was going to be the D, and I was like, wow, how cool is that, it's huh? So cool, man. Um, I got D to sign my ET and Howling Blu-rays. Oh yeah, yeah, man. When I met her at Horrorama, you know, when I was when I was working um, in production, I had the, the pleasure of of working on a uh, a, a gem of a movie um, called Catch Me If You Can with and, uh, Tom Hanks and Leo DiCaprio. Yeah, yeah. I and, know that uh, film. I saw that in theaters. Oh, it's a wonderful movie. It's just a wonderful movie, and and one of my one really amazing day I had to, I had to take Steven Spielberg to the airport, to the Ontario airport. And uh, mentioned, and this is by the way, this is all happening around the 20th anniversary. And they were having a big shindig and a screening and a thing. And John Williams was going to be playing live and there was a whole thing going on. And I, and I mentioned to Steven that I, I said, you know, Dee Wallace is one of my, was one of my heroes, one of my mentors, one of my, my teacher for, for, for years. And Steven was just over the, he, could, he couldn't believe it. He was just over the moon. He was like, oh, Dee, she's one of my favorite people ever. And is she, make, is she, coming, to, is she coming to the show? Is she, he was so excited. He was, make sure she's coming to the show. Do you talk to her? Make sure she, she's coming to the show, right? She's coming to the show, you know, the big mm -hmm. screening. Um, and right after that, so we're, we're driving in. I had no idea this was going on. We're driving into Ontario Airport. And, you know, his pterodactyl airplane from Indiana Jones is sitting up on a pedestal at the Ontario Airport. Not Ontario, Canada, but Ant Ontario, California. Oh, wow. Is sitting up there on the pedestal there. And in the middle of our conversation, he starts going, that's my plane. That's my plane. There's my plane. And I was like, uh, no, Stephen, you're taking a chopper, man. He's like, no, my that plane, that's my plane from you know Indy One. I looked over and there it was sitting up there. He said, and Stephen was again, he's like a little kid. He was like, he was so excited. He said, Can we can we drive out there? I said, You're Steven fucking Spielberg, you can do anything you want. <laughs> you know? 
<laughs> and sure enough, we drove in and I said, can, you know, we sort of explained it. I said, can, do you mind if we drive? Because his chopper was not far away. And so we drove over there and he, uh, what a, I mean, this is our industry, brother. This is our, this is our gig. It couldn't be a better gig, could it? Nope, it could not. <laughs> well, you know what? Um, before I let you go, I was wondering if you got a web page or any charities that you're involved with that you want to plug on here? Um, just, just, you know, support, support, uh, suicide awareness, mm -hmm. support, uh, uh, the horror, uh, film base and, and mm -hmm. film community. Um, my, you know, my webpage, you can go on willdix.actor. Mm -hmm. Um, but, you know, support this industry, man. That's what I would say, because those, ch that bleeds out into charities all over the world. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll tell you what, next year, I usually, I, um, I usually give it a year, but next year, you know, uh, maybe about this time, I'll invite you back on. I would love to come. You know, and because um, we'll talk about some of the stuff that you've been involved with behind the scenes, you know. Huh, it's been you a know, lot of but, years in production, man. Yep. And we'll get involved with that. But it was nice to talk Secret Santa and 13 Fanboy with you. And thank uh, you so much for, for, for loving this movie that we love so much, that we put so much effort and energy and love into. Yeah. Two of them here, you know. Two of them. <laughs> two of them back to back. What a connection, man. That's that's our business. There okay. you go. There you go. And uh, but it was delight. I was delighted to have you on here today. Me too, man. And, um, Me too. and I'm delighted to stay connected with you. And uh, when this is ready, I'll send you the link and you can post it wherever you please. Thank you. <laughs> yep. Um, before I let you go, would you mind doing a plug for my show? Sure. Yeah. Just uh, state your name. I'm and, Will Dixon. Uh, and uh, say you're listening to Greg Gilbert on Python's Paradise. This is Will Dixon, and I'm listening to Greg Gilbert on Python's Paradise. Absolutely, absolutely. Check it Folks, out, man. Yes, check uh, Will out in Secret Santa and in 13 Fanboy. And much more to come. Much more to come. And I'd be delighted to have you on for my 2023. I can't, can't wait, brother. I cannot wait. Absolutely. And I hope Adam brings you into more of his projects, you know, because uh, we'll be after Secret Santa, after Secret Santa, I kind of see, well, see what he does next. You, you will, you, you're going to be loving what he does next. I love the skeleton crew. I'm keeping it under wraps right now, but it's coming and it's going to be it's awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, Will, you have yourself a wonderful Sunday. You too, man. Stay warm and stay off the ice, man. <laughs> stay off the ice. Yeah, I've learned my lesson on that. Right. Of course, it doesn't matter whether you learn your lesson. You still slip. <laughs> but anyway, you take care. God bless. And uh, have care, yourself brother. a wonderful day. You too. Yeah. Take care. Bye-bye.